Hey folks, something a little bit different today. Rather than doing a workbench time lapse, I want to talk about something that happened outside the shop that I have some footage for that I'm going to cut in here, um, but that I can't actually do in the shop because I don't have these tools. What I want to talk about today is laser cutting. Last year, the City of Ottawa partnered with the American Embassy here in the nation's capital to open a public makerspace in one of our public libraries. The cool thing about this is that as long as you have a library card and you take the certification course so that you are safe to use the machines, you can go in and the only thing that you pay for is the materials you use. Otherwise, you get a booking and you're in. The thing I love about this is the projects that I don't think I ever would have considered before, I'm starting to consider because I now have access to a laser cutter and a whole bunch of 3D printers that I simply cannot afford on my own right now. The project that I've kind of been messing with on and off recently, um, and I say on and off because it's really hard to get a booking, people are so excited that there's a makerspace here in town that they can use for free that it's almost impossible for me to get in, uh, is laser cut nerd jewelry. The idea came from my sister, really. Uh, she is a huge Stargate nerd, and I love her for it. Uh, and uh, around Christmas time, when I was scrambling to get in the makerspace and just couldn't do it, uh, I had this idea to do a full set of Stargate-themed jewelry, essentially. Uh, necklaces, earrings, the works. What I want to do right now is take you through my thought process in coming up, in coming up with the shapes and then walk you through the steps I've taken up until now, uh, knowing that I still have a bit of learning to do, and actually still have some work to do before I get the project into a place where it's actually gonna look like something worthwhile. What is available at Imagine Space by way of the laser cutter is uh, an Epilogue Mini 24. It, it is really cool. So what the Epilogue needs, um, unlike most printers, is actually two different images to print from. So here is the initial setup uh, for, my, um, for my sets of nerd jewelry. So you see we've got three Stargate sets up here. Um, we've got uh, the, uh, the SG-1 Stargate uh, in the middle. You can't see it here, um, but what I will do here, let's get up nice and, nice and tight on these. So we've got the uh, the SG-1 Stargate here with uh, the, um, the I should know what this is, the glyph, I guess, the symbol, the, the dialing doohickey. Um, there we've got the Atlantis Stargate here uh, with the city in the middle, and then we've got the Destiny Gate uh, with uh, Destiny itself um, in, in the center here. And the notion is that... Uh, is that these would all, uh, we would have the chains kind of coming out here like so, uh, and that there would be a pin coming down here that would connect this kind of free-floating piece in the center. Um, and this would all be rendered uh, in this lovely birch wood here, so we'd have you know, the, the gate, and then kind of like, kind of like this with the Stargate along the outside, and then the, the symbol uh, pertaining to the individual shows here. Um, also had some tchotchkes for my, uh, for, well, we'll talk about this another time. Um, and then uh, I thought, well, if I'm doing Stargate, I'm definitely doing Tron for the kids. This was kind of the the other place that uh, that this had its genesis. So I've got these grayscale images that I threw together, um, I believe in Photoshop, of uh, the identity disks and Tron. And I thought I'd cut out a couple extra just in case. Uh, and then what the hell, we're doing Stargate, we're doing Tron. Let's do an entire set of Star Trek. So we've got the the uh, three department patches from the original series, Next Gen, DS9, Voyager, um, Star Trek Online, and then the reboot series. Um, and then over here, because I can't leave well enough alone, I also threw together a three-part um, box for the Stargate set. So we would have, um, this would be the bottom. Uh, we would glue a piece of... Um, I guess black felt would probably look best to this. Uh, then we would glue this piece over top, and then the necklaces would go here, 
Ooh, rings. I'm actually, I'm, I'm drawing looking not at this, but actually looking at the screen on my camera. I should probably be looking at the paper that I'm drawing on. So that may not actually make any difference tonight. Anyway, uh, and then the chains would kind of bundle up here. Um, and then we would have hinges on the back, like so. Uh, and then they would attach to the top, like this, which would be laser etched with um, the Atlantis patch, the SG-1 patch, uh, and the Icarus base, base patch from the beginning of um, that third Stargate series universe. There we go. So this was the plan, and uh, these would all be cut out of, actually, there we go, uh, of these 12 by 24 sheets um, of, uh, I believe they're 5 eighths ply. Um, they're fairly, fairly thick, um, but they're what I had available. Let's just double check. I oh, know I lied. This is quarter inch. So out of this quarter inch ply. Now, for a laser cutter to work, uh, it needs two things. Um, of course, this this would be scaled up. Incidentally, I made uh, this layout in Inkscape, which is a free vector image editor. Check the comments below. Um, I will post uh, I will post a link to it. Um, going forward, I'm going to be using Illustrator, um, but because. Inkscape is what the uh, is what Imagine Space uses. I thought I'd stick with that. The laser cutter needs two things. One, it needs this grayscale image. Uh, this is for etching, so it uses a lower powered laser and kind of treats it just like a an, an old school, almost like a dot matrix printer. Um, so it, it dithers the image uh, to different shades of gray based on its uh, based on its lightness, um, and it will. It will apply more power to darker dots and less power to lighter dots. If that makes sense. So you can you can actually, um, if you're clever about it, you can actually sculpt really interesting, uh, really really interesting shapes into the wood. So um, there are examples, which of course I didn't take any pictures of because I'm a fool, um, of blocks of wood, like really thick blocks of wood that people have actually etched really intricate scenes into. And that has got me thinking about what I'm going to do going forward, but we'll come back to that. So we've got this, this kind of raster image uh, that gets dithered and printed and etched. And then there's a second image that you need that is vector only, and this is um, this is the lines that are used to cut. So rather than going zip, 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 like a printer, the laser cutter actually just follows the path and would go and then go around the little chevron symbol here, and do, do, and then do all the little intricate details here. Um, so this is what would be cut out in theory. So we've got the raster image set, we've got the vector image set, we've got um, we've got our medium in the uh, in the bed of the laser cutter. So let's see what that looks like once you start actually doing the thing. Here's my results the second time around. Um, yeah. So some of this went really well. This etching, for example, looks great. All of this looks wonderful. It's really, really nice. Um, this etching with the with a little Potter Creek 
tchotchkes here. Again, really, really nice. Very, like, I, I, I want to just keep touching it. It's so nice. Um, but when it came to this other stuff I was doing, uh, it's burned to hell, um, and there's no detail, and things are cut in when they shouldn't be, and other things are just not really apparent. This actually came out better than I thought it would. Um, this probably, until, until I burned the hell out of that, is probably the, the best of all of them. Um, but you'll also notice that none of these are actually cut through. Essentially what's what's going on here is that uh, there, are, there are a bunch of different settings at play when you're using the laser cutter. There's a power setting, um, there's a frequency setting, there's a um, there's a speed setting. So all of these, like this, this kind of, this triangulation happens when you're trying to get a really nice etch and then a nice cut uh, that I haven't quite mastered yet. The problem started with the actual file. Um, the, the detail reproduction, I'm going to pull you back for a second. You're going to notice right off the bat that the detail reproduction on the smaller ones is not a, as nice. Um, and that's, that's my bad when I was creating the, the raster image file. You can get the laser printer, uh, the the laser printer, the laser cutter, up to 600 dots per inch, which is really really fine. Like that would give me the kind of fine detail that I had in the last one. Um, but I rasterized uh, all these images after I scaled them down at 300 dots per inch rather than 600 dots per inch, and that one is that like that's purely on me. So I've learned uh, to always 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 make giant ridiculous PDFs when I'm setting up my images to print. I, there, there's a lot of burning, there's a lot of scorching, um, a lot of the time, uh, and, and obviously none of these are actually cut out. Um, if, if we look here on the back, some of these actually almost got cut out after several passes that resulted in all this burning that you're seeing here. Not only that, but quarter inch ply is, is probably too thick for this, this project anyway. It needs to be thinner, it needs to be lighter, and it needs to um, it needs to cut faster because going over again and again and again on the same spots uh, leads to a lot of burning and, and burning means that I'm losing detail. So the next time I go, I'm gonna take, uh, I found these, these kind of craft boards um, at the Walmart and these are not quarter inch, these are um, about eighth inch bits of ply. Uh, they're they're just called like they're Elmer's wood slats. Um, and I just happened to notice them while I was while I was there looking for something else. Uh, and I think these are going to do a much nicer job. These are going to serve my purposes much better. First of all, the color um, the color is nicer if I want the laser etch to stand on its own. Uh, it's it's lighter and it's far more consistent than what's in this ply. These are too small to be able to see any of the screen anyway, so I don't really care. The other nice thing about uh, the the other thing that I have to realize um, is that I need to be uh, smarter about setting up um, setting up the size of my projects. For example, look at this. This is three inches by seven inches, okay? Now compare this size of project with that. Oh yeah, by the way, I did accidentally get one piece cut out. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little tray almost etched in here um, that I'm gonna play with further next time I go in. Um, this is to this is to uh, accommodate the, the black felt that I mentioned before. Um, but this, like going in, having a booking for an hour and expecting to get all of this stuff etched and cut, the cutter just doesn't go that fast. So if I scale down my objectives, I can still get Look at this. I can still get a set, a set, not two sets, not 
two sets of three, two sets of two, and a third set of seven. Jesus. Um, th this is something that I always have to learn every time I'm doing any kind of project is that I have to go too far and then scale back. Um, eventually I'm going to get better at kind of knowing what the limitations of, of my time and my tools are. Um, but this, this was not that day. So I've got these, um, I I'm going to have to go back to my, uh, my original images as well. A lot of this stuff is just... Um, they're just images that I kind of stole off the internet. What I'm going to have to do uh, as well is set these up better for etching because I really quite like the look um, before I burned the hell out of it of this right here. So there's, uh, you can you can feel it, uh, and you can see it on the video, like there is a pretty significant lip here. Um, and I, I, could, I could really sculpt that out. Now this, well, this, this little star here is quite, well, uh, is quite well etched, but the rest doesn't really make any sense. Like it's not shaped the way the chevron in the game is, which, um, which kind of has the, the highest point here, actually, with the star etched into it, and then, um, and then it kind of fading out. So I have to, I have to recreate this um, in Illustrator as a grayscale, dark at the edges, and lighter towards the center. And once I do that, then I can actually, I can actually etch the proper shape in it, um, and it'll, it'll look really nice. So I have to go back to the drawing board um, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, I have more bookings on the laser cutter coming up fairly soon. Um, when I saw how booked it was getting, I grabbed a whole bunch of uh, little slots um, kind of as far out as I could. Uh, I should probably go back and book some more actually now that I'm thinking about it. But I have another one coming up. I'm gonna retool my ridiculous plans. Just get rid of these, just get rid of them. I'm gonna retool for these lovely little three by seven craft boards. Um, I'm gonna take them back in. I'm gonna actually get stuff done and etched and cut and it'll be wonderful. And when that happens, I will be really, really glad. Folks, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to keep you updated on the Nerd Jewelry Project. We will see how it goes next time. Uh, in the meantime, I will probably do some video of actually putting the um, putting the new files together in Illustrator, and there will be more video from Imagine Space once that happens. And I just want to make a note, it's been in the credits before, but the track is Dresses and Ties by The Stringers. They're an awesome local band here in Ottawa. Um, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to thestringersband.com and check out their show dates. If any of them are near you, you should go because I guarantee you it'll be a really good time. Two, I want you to watch their video for their track Apology, uh, it's a lot of fun. Three, I want you to go to thestringers.bandcamp.com, download their debut EP C with Seven, and uh, and just just have an awesome time listening to it because you you will. The Stringers really want to play at the Turtle Music Festival. It's coming up, uh, but they need votes for you to do so. So as soon as you see that link come up, hit it. You'll be taken on the page. Just click on the Stringers and hit vote and your vote will be counted towards them actually playing in the festival. Please take care of them. They've done a lot to take care of us. As always, thank you so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe. I'll tell you something. We love the things we make over here, and we love to share them with you. Thanks, folks. We'll see you later.